most clients that come to me for Notion help are already using Notion and they all share the same feeling. They feel that they are not using Notion to its full potential. It just doesn't feel right for them. It's messy, things are hard to find, things get lost. And to be honest, this is pretty understandable. Notion is very flexible, probably too flexible. So the success while using the tool depends on how we have designed it to work. There is one thing that solves this, which are workflows. When clients show me their workspaces, there is one thing that I typically see. They have already created one database for, let's say, task management, and they pretend to use that same view for everything, for creating tasks, for scheduling, for assigning to other people, for completing the task, for everything. That doesn't work. There is not a standardized way to create tasks, no view that will help us schedule those tasks. We are basically seeing too much information in a single place and using a view for too many purposes. And that will make everyone, including me, <laughs> say, screw this, I'm back to using Todoist. But there are very good news. Since Notion is so flexible, we can create workflows that will help us make sense of the app and really use it to its full potential. And I have a method for creating these workflows and I call it the workflow method. <laughs> I know, I'm very smart. So let me show you. One thing we have to take into account is that Notion is gonna be used by humans, right? Well, this is just until ChatGPT is gonna be able to use it for us. But well, until that time comes, yeah, it's gonna be used by humans. And what are some of the areas that humans fall short at? Memory and focus. Yeah, we suck at those. So we need to make it easier for us humans to use our Notion workspace. So for that, we need to keep in mind the following. Show the least amount of information at every time in the workspace, this will help us with focus, and guide the user in using the system so he doesn't have to remember it. That's it, this is super easy, right? Okay, but how do we translate that into building a workflow, into actually building this in Notion? So far, this is just theory. Very easy as well, we just follow the workflow. We start at the very first step of it, and we follow it. And as we follow it, we will uncover the workflow itself, and we will be building the parts of the system that we need for performing each part of the workflow. That's it. This is the whole workflow method. Now, let me give you an example. The most common use case, which is task management. Technically, we can create tasks from whatever, like as long as we have a link database or a database that contains tasks, we can go there and create a task. Wrong. If we allow that to happen, people will forget to add important data to the task. For example, we may forget to assign it a department, and therefore this task is not going to show in that department's dashboard, which will send the task into the frightening notion void. Have you ever heard the sentence, oh, I feel things are falling through the cracks. This is it, this is what's happening. So what do we do instead? We build a workflow. We have identified which is the first part of this workflow, which is create a new task which by the way, this is common to every task management system. The way that we create a task may vary, but for the sake of this explanation, let's say that this task is always created within Notion. So what do we do? We create a page exactly for this specific purpose. All the properties that everybody that creates a new task needs to fill. And that is the only purpose of this page. And this is the page that I will create for this example. This is a simple linked database with this view, with just the properties that I need to create every time. So like this, I always make sure that I have at least these properties filled. So this has taken me to define which are my must properties. And then I'm just displaying it over here. Then the filter in this case is super easy. It's just that the created time is today. So the task will disappear tomorrow. So there is just one purpose for this view. Okay, so we have created the first part of the workflow. Congratulations, but what comes next? What happens after we have created a task? Again, we follow the workflow. We ask ourselves, what happens next? And what happens next is typically, if we didn't know when we are gonna do the task in the moment that we created it, we are going to schedule it. So that's what happens next. So we will need a view to help us do that, to help us do this second part of the workflow. And this is what I have done with this view over here. So on the left, I have the unscheduled tasks and you see they have no DO date and on the right, everything that I have already scheduled. So this is my next step of the workflow. 
and this view is helping me exactly with this. Could I have done this in a table, in the same table that I have created the task? Yes, but that already defeats the purpose of focus. We need to help people focus and we need to guide them to do what they need to do within every view and every page. Okay, so once we have scheduled the task, what happens next? Uh, you see, it is always the same question, what happens next? So after we have scheduled the task, well, the person who has the task assigned is gonna see it in his dashboard and he's just gonna execute on it. Okay, we create a view, I, I, don't, I don't need to show you, but the method is super simple, it's just find where the workflow starts, in this case, creating a task, and always until the very end of it, what happens next? What happens next? What happens next? And we continuously create views to help us do this, what happens next? And the beauty of this method is that it works with everything, with every kind of workflow. The workflow can be as simple as this one in the example, in which the workflow is completely linear, one thing happens, another one happens, another one happens, and that is it. Or they can be as complex as one thing happens and then from this step, multiple things can happen. So we will have to create all these different paths. And for those kind of more complex kind of situations, I recommend to actually draw this on paper first and then build the different views and the different pages that is going to allow you to execute on each of these um, situations. And it even doesn't matter that some of these steps in the workflow are outside of Notion that we use other apps for because then we can also use Zapier or make.com to actually stick everything together, remaining Notion as the single source of truth. But yeah, in the end, the way and the method to build all of this, it is exactly the same, which is the starting point and what can happen next. That's it. Another perk of using this method is that it will actually force you to redefine your workflows because of course for every step of the way you are going to sit down and create the views and everything so you will have time to double think is this the right thing to do right now and this is what happens by the way in all the calls that i have with clients we double think all the time the workflows that they were already working with because most often than not we find better ways in simpler ways to do what they were doing so yeah give this a try and let me know in the comments of this video if you found this way of thinking useful because i believe that it's gonna make building in Notion so much easier. So that is it for this video and as always, hasta la próxima.